Yes. Hello, 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 and welcome everybody as you are jumping in. Invite your friends, our your fellow clients. We are so excited. Come on in, get settled. We are looking forward to another good week with Coffee with Clients. Excited to have you all here. It is an incredible topic, a topic that we're going to discuss today. The element we're going to discuss today is near and dear to both Kelly, who is going to be co-hosting with me today, and my heart. And so we are excited about it today. Coffee with Clients is just one of the ways that we get to integrate into the Optavia community, which is one of our four pillars. So in our four pillars, we have, we get to have a coach, we have a habits of health transformational system to follow, and we also have our community, we have our healthy fuelings. So this is the community piece that we get to integrate in and spend time with the people who are on the same journey as we are. And we also get to you know spend time with people who are on the same mission that we are. We are trying to get to optimal health and for many already working toward ultra health, getting fit on the other side of optimization. And we are all in the same mindset. So this community helps us to focus on that. Each week we are spending time diving deeper into the Habits of Health transformational system, element by element. And this weekly connect is a great support to all coaches and all clients alike. While it is not specifically sponsored by Optavia, we do discuss topics and only share information that are that is Optavia compliant. We also like to give the reminder that this community should not be considered as a replacement to your coach. Your coach is still your frontline support person, your, your cheerleader. Um, and so this component is equally as important as anything else we have, including your coach. So be sure to lever your, leverage your personal coach, even outside of these Coffee with Client times, uh, for the greatest measure of support you can have on your journey. And so we're going to jump right in and begin to share because uh, you are going to teach us about uh, the BMI and the importance of the healthy BMI and, and you know where we are as far as fat is on our bodies. But today, I want to just go ahead and introduce our topic for today. And we're going to be talking about our path to a healthy weight and the importance of that. And, you know, there are several different things that this element is talking about. And like I said, Kelly is going to give a great, great teaching on healthy BMI. Uh, but as we've been talking about getting ready for today's coffee with clients, I began to think about my own journey. And I told her, I said, you know, I'm going to use today to share a bit personally and be a bit transparent about my own journey, because I believe that will help many of the clients that are here because of what I've experienced with the clients that I worked with. Now for myself, when I came into uh, this health journey, I didn't even think of it as a health journey per se. I like probably many of you just wanted to lose weight. That was my only ambition in finding one other thing that might work for the purpose of taking off the unwanted weight. But if I realized very quickly, if I was not focusing on health, I would never be able to accomplish what I needed to do for myself. And then I began to also ponder over the last week how in all of the other weight loss journey, not health journey, I was never on a health journey until I got to this journey. I realized that in all of those journeys, I lost a substantial amount of weight. I am that girl that lost the same 60 plus pounds at least three times. But the only thing I can say about that, that that was exciting during that time when I lost it, it definitely was not fun putting the weight back on and putting more weight back on on top of it. But the correlation between all of those journeys, each of those journeys, is that 
I never, ever got to a healthy goal weight. Interestingly enough, I never even got to the official weight that I wanted. I always stopped short of it. Sometimes, one or two of those times, I even came within five pounds of the actual goal weight that I had for myself, losing 60 plus pounds and couldn't even push myself to lose the last five pounds to celebrate exactly where I wanted to be. And what was happening there? What was happening there is that I was never ever focusing on a healthy weight, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. So what happened with me, I had the same experience and I'll talk more about that later. I had the same experience uh, at first in this journey because I had the same mindset in this journey. Uh, transparently speaking, I am almost three years into my journey and I still have not made it all the way to my healthy BMI. And again, I'll talk more about that a little bit later, but th there were, I realized that I never even believed I could get there, but it really began with not even really knowing if I wanted to get there. So I, like you, am at the edge of my seat, looking forward to Kelly talking about the importance of getting to our healthy weight, our healthy BMI, and all that that entails. So Kelly, I'm going to be a student today, and I'm going to toss this over to you to share. Oh, can I possibly teach you something, Miss Yolanda? One of my favorite people. So hi, guys. I'm so excited. Who has their life book with them today? We're going to be going, yay, see all the life books. Good job. So we're going to be going over element six. And, you know, I just want to go over, you know, we've got a few pages here to discuss, but I have lots and lots of notes because this is, I can tell you, one of the number one things I hear clients mention at the very beginning when their goal is so low. Um, so let's go over a few things first here. So do you know there's 45 million dieters per year in the U.S.? Whoa, right? 85% um, of these dieters gain their weight back and more within just two years time. So part of that is because we never, like Yolanda mentioned, get to a healthy goal weight. And that's why we don't believe we can. That is why I started by saying 20 pounds would be fantastic. <laughs> 64 pounds later, I was like, wow, I can do this. This happened. I can't believe it still sometimes. But what makes Optavia different than any other diet that's out on the market? Throw some of those things in the chat if you can think of what those are. Um, part of those is the habits. So learning the healthy habits, installing those one at a time, um, taking it one small bite at a time, if you will, right? Learning how to fuel our body, when to fuel our body, all of those things. The fact that you have, oh, I see some good ones there. Education, habits of health. Yes, love it. Um, a coach, a coach to support you, right? When you get through your first week and you've only lost three pounds and you see a gentleman who lost 10 in his first week, you're discouraged. Would you quit at that point if you didn't have a coach to say, but you're not as big as the guy who lost 10 pounds and you lost four inches and your pants fit great, right? These things keep us motivated. Um, of course, the community, this is a prime example of that. And then of course the food, the fuelings, they make it easy. I love what Wayne Pendle says, for those of you who know Wayne Pendle, he says, if I told you that you needed to eat six times a day, small meals that are nutrition packed, that have all the appropriate macronutrients and are low in carbohydrates, could any of us do that? I couldn't do that. So the fact that we have the fuelings to help us that keeps it easy and convenient, also another piece of this, okay? So that's what changes a diet, from uh, the difference between that and Optavia. So one thing I want you to look at on page 154, if you have your books, is your weight management phase. I want you to take a look at those different things. So we have the overweight or obese category. We have phase one, weight loss. Phase two, which is a healthy weight. Phase three, which is optimization. And phase four, I don't know very many people in phase four, but I'm working to get there, uh, longevity. 
go ahead and evaluate real quickly. And if you're brave enough, pop in the chat what phase you are currently in. Most of us are gonna be in that phase one, I'm guessing. All right. Um, so one, 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 I see a three. I see a four, good job, Stephanie, woohoo. Longevity is awesome. So most of the time, we can't even believe we can get to a healthy weight, much, much less beyond to optimization and then into longevity. And longevity really looks at living the healthiest we can for the longest amount of time, okay? And it is proposed in the books by Dr. Anderson that we can live many, many healthy years. The average age, I believe, is around 80 years old um, in the U.S. And he says we can extend that. And with technology, it's probably going to even be extended beyond that. But who wants to live if you're not doing it healthy and feeling good, right? So, <laughs> so I love that. Thanks for sharing uh, your what phase you're in. Now, let's take a look at the BMI on the next page, 155. This is the uh, body mass index chart. And there is a lot of controversy around there. Anybody, just, just kind of raise your hand so I can see you on video if you've ever thought the BMI chart is bogus because we never believed we could get to a healthy weight, right? Um, so most clients, as I mentioned, start out aiming low on their weight loss goal. I would say 98% of our folks that come on board um, are, are aiming pretty low. They're not anywhere near a healthy BMI, but the belief is just not there that they can make it to that goal, right? Again, like I said, 20 pounds to me was a miracle in my book. If I could lose that and keep it off, I'd have been happy, but I didn't realize till I got into it and saw the progression of what I was learning that I was installing habits and that it was actually doable. Um, did I start to even begin to look at, can I get to a healthy BMI and what will that look like? Anybody else uh, throw a one in the chat if you felt that same way. And then when we start to see what's possible and even hit our first goal, then we can stop and reevaluate. And so when we have clients come on that have a low goal, we don't ever say, oh, that goal is not good enough. No, we don't say that. We say, great, that's wonderful. Let's go there. Let's do that. And most of the time when they hit that first goal, then we ask them to reevaluate if that's really where they want to be. And then we start to really educate on what the healthy BMI, uh, what that tool is there for, okay? So a lot of things that we hear are uh, myths. So who has heard I'm big bone or who said it? I think I probably said that. Um, I look unhealthy below a certain weight. A lot of those, right? or I have been um, 120 pounds and I look sickly and everyone says how terrible I look. We hear that a lot as well, right? And these would be um, people who, are, who need to get to the mid BMI, okay? So um, those are myths and here's why. Because bone density doesn't account for the fat that's in your, in your body and on those bones, okay? So um, yes, there are a few, it, it probably examples. Shaquille O'Neal would be one of those. He's seven foot. Some of the bigger people in the world probably have that. But that bone density doesn't lend to the weight as much as we'd like to think it would, okay? Um, and then looking sickly, uh, I just want to propose a couple of things. Um, could this be our perception? If we look in the habits of health, Dr. Anderson talks about living in a country that's obesogenic. What does that mean? We're on the heavier side of things, right? So when we are surrounded by people, 42% of adults are either are, are obese, considered obese in the obese category, and 72% of people are overweight. We're surrounded by this. So do you think that our brains and our neural pathways start to believe that this is normal? So when people start to lose weight and whoever has started losing weight, you've heard from a loved one, a friend, a family member, gosh, you look too skinny. <laughs> I did, I was in a healthy BMI and I heard that over and over again because it's just not the norm for people to be within a healthy BMI. Um, so just a couple of things to ponder and think about, um, you know, considering how the weight was lost. If somebody is losing weight and they're doing it through starvation and it's not in a healthy manner with nutrition in mind, they're going to look sickly. They're not going to look well. So we always challenge our clients to look at how did you lose that weight last time? Was it in a healthy manner? Were you getting all the water, all the food, all the nutrition that you needed? Because this can make a really big difference. 
And then I would just say, once you get to that healthy BMI, start to evaluate. Even if you're on the high end of it, start to evaluate, how do I feel? How do I look? How do I, I'm just going to give you an example, and I hope this is not too much information, but I got to my mid BMI and I said, I'm going to lose another five and see how I feel. It was still in a healthy BMI range. But when I dropped that extra five pounds, I literally could feel my tailbone when I laid down in bed. I was not comfortable at that weight. So I gained the five pounds back to my mid BMI. And I found that that's really where my best weight is. That's where I feel the best. That's where I'm the most comfortable. So I would challenge you to evaluate. Maybe being mid BMI is just a little too much for you, but you can evaluate it when you get there. Okay. Is this all making sense to everybody? Are we having fun yeah. yet? Because this is so fun, right? All right, moving along. So as Dr. Anderson mentions in the books, uh, BMI less than 30 reduces the risk of developing a major chronic disease by how much? Does anyone know? 80%. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. And we think medication is what fixes all this, right? Nope, getting in a healthy BMI does. So a healthy BMI less than 30. Um, and this isn't even midway. So that's just being in the range, okay? And then the biggest things we want to look at is BMI combined with waist circumference. And this really um, is the gold standard to assess a healthy weight. So you can see in the book on page 156 of your life book. Um, so your health, your health is at risk if your waist is, and for men, it's different than women. So for men, uh, um, 37 inches or over and then women 31.5. So it's important that you're doing your measurements and at the waist, just keep in mind, you're gonna wanna, um, there's directions up top here, how to correctly measure your waist. So it's at the belly button line, you're gonna breathe out, you're gonna measure. Okay, so make sure you're doing that as well. And then waist circumference allows us to evaluate visceral organ fat. Here's why it's so important that I think so many of us don't make the connection. If we're not, so our bodies lose weight kind of from the outside in. This is a protective measure. This is how we were made. We were made to keep that fat closest to our organs so that if something happened and we starved to death, we couldn't forage berries, we couldn't hunt and kill meat. <laughs> I probably would starve to death if I had to hunt and kill meat. Um, you know, back in the day, this is how our bodies survived. We stored so that when there was famine, we would, we would be able to live. So just keep in mind, we lose from the outside outside in. When we're getting to a healthy BMI is where we start to deal with the visceral organ fat. So this is the fat that is around your organs. Okay. And until you get into that healthy BMI, you're not even beginning to touch that visceral organ fat. And this is really, truly where health comes from. Okay. Um, so uh, again, your health is at risk if men's waist is 37 or over and women 31.5. So we want to be below that. Okay. And then uh, a healthy weight is considered a BMI of 25 or below. So you can see on that chart on the page 155 where you should be. Take a glance at that, write it down, and just uh, maybe discuss that with your coach this next time you have a call this week. Um, and just kind of decide if that's something you'd like to shoot for. Or if you want to hit your first goal first, but definitely look at it and evaluate where you should be according to your height and your waist circumference. Okay. Um, and then lastly, uh, really, we're not ready. Clients are not ready to move out of uh, phase one until the, these criteria are met. So until we're at a 25 BMI or below and our waist circumference is appropriate, according to what's written in the book there. And then we're ready to move on to the next phase, okay? And what Dr. Anderson says is that really once we hit these criteria, we must be able to maintain that for two weeks before we move into the next phase. So this, what we're looking at here is have we installed the habits? And I'm gonna actually switch over real quick. I think I've got enough time um, to the Habits of Health book. This coordinates with the life book, but I'm going to go to page 219, and this is where it talks about the phases. But here's what he says before you move on to phase two and learn how to maintain your new healthy weight, consider the following Have you identified and started to develop fundamental habits of health that will help you keep the weight off? 
in proper motivation and choice. Like Yolanda said, we don't do cheat days, it's choices, right? And, and we're gonna do choices all through our journey from now till the end of time. Um, have you reached your goal weight in BMI? Have you read and studied the ha uh, healthy eating habits in parts 2.4 and 2.6? Now, what these are is these, what this does is tell you how to eat healthy. So you're going to, he has charts in the book and he actually tells you the low glycemic foods that you eat, need to eat the most of, because remember, once we move into that other phase, we're backing down on the fuelings that we're having. So all this while, while we're building the habits, we're also learning how to cook a healthy meal. Hello, the lean and green meal, right? We've learned how to make a healthy meal but we're going to incorporate other foods into our diet in this next phase. And so it's important that you review that in the book as well. And so that is parts 2.9, uh, 2.4 and 2.6, sorry. And then if you've been in phase one for more than three weeks, have you read parts 2.9 and 2.12 on motion? Because you know, as we go progressively through the stages of this journey, we're going to add motion as we go. Okay. Now there is, obviously talk to your coach about this, but there is a cap on how much exercise you can do on five and one. I'm not going into all of that, but I will tell you as you're moving from phase two to phase three, you're going to start needing to level up your activity in your exercise. This is part of maintaining a healthy weight. Okay. And that looks different for everyone. It doesn't mean you have to go to the gym and kill it five days a week. That's not what he recommends in the book. So definitely going to want to check out parts 2.9 and 2.12 on motion and a movement program. Okay, what this looks like for me, just to bring it back down to home, is I walk between 6,000 and 10,000 steps a day. Oftentimes I get those in my house, especially when it's cold outside, but I make it a point to have my little thing. I got 3,000 before I got here this morning, just so I didn't have so much this afternoon. And then also doing stairs. I try to do 10 flights of stairs a day. And then I do a daily yoga exercise uh, routine. And so, you know, this looks different for everyone. Some people aren't into yoga. That's fine. You're going to go do pickleball. I know Fred loves his pickleball and he burns some serious calories doing that. And so everybody has different things that they enjoy doing. My husband, he likes running on the treadmill and some people like to run. I'm only going to run if I'm being chased by a bear. So if you see that, you might want to outrun me folks, because that's what's happening. <laughs> All right. I hope that all made sense. I know it was a whirlwind of information, but if you didn't catch it, go back and watch the replay on YouTube. And uh, I would just challenge you, get with your coach on your healthy BMI, have this discussion with them. It's so important for you, especially in maintaining. I can tell you what I've seen with clients that I've worked with is those who have not pushed to their healthy BMI, even in just the, the top part of their BMI, have struggled more keeping the weight off long-term. There's something magical about that BMI chart, believe it or not. So do uh, investigate that and talk to your coach about that. And, uh, and that's what I have. So Yolanda, come on and share with us uh, your testimony. I'm so excited, excited to hear this. Wow, 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 wow. Let me tell you, you basically taught my testimony of, of what my experience was like coming into this. And like I said, I knew that I wanted to lose weight, but I had in my mind how much weight I wanted to lose, not taking into account what would be a healthy amount of weight to lose. And I'm grateful. I have to say that I really am grateful for the community. I'm grateful for the coach uh, coaching. I'm grateful for the fuelings that helps you figure things out. But I'm also grateful for this Habits of Health transformational system that actually got me into the mindset of health because all of those things together is what has kept me from going back to putting all the weight on, even though I did not make it to my actual healthy BMI yet. I'm actually in that journey now, like seriously pushing toward it. It was my own personal decision. And so the very same struggle that I had, I have as a coach with my clients as well, in hearing those stories of, just like you said, um, well, that, I, I don't want to lose too much because I don't want to be too skinny. And I'm like, skinny, healthy, what, what matters most here? But I remember I had that same mindset as well. And also, same thing. There was that thought that I would look malnourished if I got to a certain point 
at this stage in age in my life. And I realized something about this program and the difference in everything else I had done that malnur uh, excuse me, that nutrition based weight loss, it carries differently than just losing weight. And so you were correct in saying that it you, you're not gonna it's gonna look different if you're not putting into your body what it actually needs during that weight loss process. And so for me, I really struggled with it. And I realized, I think maybe about a year, a year and a half into my journey. And like I said, I'm almost three years into my journey. And I realized that I didn't, there was a mindset kink that I actually had. I somehow unconsciously was not even convinced that I could get to a healthy weight. I wasn't really convinced. And why? Because I had so many different weight loss journeys that did not yield that result of me getting to my official goal weight. So what happened during that process for me, I became comfortable with how much weight I had lost at first, just like I did the other three times. But then it actually got to a very dangerous place for me. And that place is complacency, being comfortable with being at the health, excuse me, not the healthy weight, but the weight I wanted to be at that I had gotten to before. And then that now the game became not putting all the weight back on. So I felt like I was good. I was definitely better than I was before because in every other journey I had, I regained all the weight and then some within six to nine months. So the danger spot for me was losing a certain amount of weight and now being beyond nine months in keeping it off and then a year in keeping it off to myself, I was doing good, but I wasn't because I still was not at my ultimate healthy weight. And so throughout this time and this journey, I remembered struggling. I even told my coach one time, I said, I, when I realized that it was about me feeling like I could not get to my actual goal, that I was actually settling with being where I was all this time. And I can tell you, it has been a challenge. The last year of teeter tottering back and forth, back and forth, just the struggle and the fight just to maintain what wasn't healthy in the first place. And I finally got to a point where I decided that I had to dismiss and divorce all the thoughts that I had about getting to my healthy BMI. I had to admit that I still was struggling with what that was gonna look like and what that was gonna feel like. And what did that look like for me in walking out that process? When, when you're worrying about what that looks like, we have to realize that that's more about what other people think about it than it is about what we think about it. And healthy for me should be dependent upon what I think about is healthy for me. And then I began to think about the fact that in my life, I'm from the country. And so when I go home, I, I can remember, I still remember to this day, uh, my former husband, I'm very close to my former husband's family still to this day. And his grandmother always looks and says, oh, you look so good. You look so healthy. And this is when I was seriously overweight. And then when I was, I was losing the weight and I would come home, well, I hope you don't lose much more. I would get those types of things. And I could remember cringing and what I felt like and what was being said to me. But I got to the point in this journey, what gave me the courage to actually move all the way into what is healthy for me is that I decided, I said, now I wasn't healthy with all this weight on me, even though I was getting compliments about how that looked. And now for me, I see my before and after picture. I don't at all like what that looks like. So how could I 
be craving what somebody else likes about what I look, when I myself don't like what that looks like. That's not healthy in and of itself. And I had to face that. So I got strong within myself and I started thinking about it like this. If you were not willing to tell me I was getting too healthy, you don't get to shame me for getting healthy. I do not buy in on it at all. I absolutely love the journey that I'm on. I look for, I look, I look ahead at those who are at their optimal weight, like my coach, my coaches, uh, Jojo and Autumn Dawson. I look at the Shats lines, whom I admire. I just look at others, Kelly, my friend, and I look at that and I love how they look healthy. And so I use them as inspiration for what that's going to look like for me when I get to my healthy go weight. So I am full speed ahead, working toward it. And there were a lot of mindset things that I had to deal with and what it looked like for me, how now, so I had been struggling all of these, uh, you know, all the last few years in trying to get there. And what did I do to now shift that I'm actually actively and consistently working toward that? What it looked like for me is I had to bring in a higher level of accountability even beyond showing up online definitely was a high level of accountability and welcoming people into my journey and they encouraged me. But I realized that I needed even more accountability than that. And I have an accountability person that we check in every single day about where we are, what we've put in our bodies, where we are as far as our journey, our weight and so on and so forth. And we are determined to get to that healthy BMI together. We, we both have very strong goals and conviction about that now. And I'm so grateful that we have a system that walks us through the mindset things that comes up and even laying this out so amazingly. I'm not a health guru, but this is so practically written that I can understand it and I could know exactly where I am. I could know exactly where I want to go. And I can know that I am actually able to get there. So I'm really, really excited about it. And so as we're getting, we want to hear from some of the people. I'm going to pass back to Kelly to give a few final thoughts. And she's going to engage clients. I know that some of you probably have things that you want to share as well. So Kelly, I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to you and uh, give your final thoughts. And, and let's hear from some of our fellow clients as well about where they are in this journey. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, as we've heard today, it's a struggle for so many. So if you're feeling the struggle, don't get lost in that and don't get discouraged in that at all. Um, it is truly, I love what you said, Yolanda, it is a journey and it's a mindset journey and it takes time for those things to change just as much as installing habits. How many years have we installed poor habits? So many. And it, it's a journey. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And it not only takes time. And I've heard this from a lot of clients, actually, um, as well as feeling it myself, that it takes a while for our brain to catch up to our body. On this program, we can be so successful that sometimes it takes us a while for our mind to catch up with our body. Um, so, you know, walk that journey, get in the books, get with your coach. This is all going to help you through those mindset shifts that we need to make in order to be healthy individuals. And don't you just love that this program is not just about losing weight. It is a head to toe program. If you allow it to transform you, it will truly transform your whole life. And that's the beauty. I had no idea when I signed up, I wanted to fit in a bathing suit, if I'm just being honest. And what I found right off the bat is it was so, so much more. And I'm so grateful to have found it. Have a great day. We are so glad you're here and see you next week for the next episode of Coffee with Clients.